This is Algebra 2, Chapter 7, Section 4, in which we will be solving logarithmic equations and inequalities. Okay. Just like on the uh, previous one, one of our basic strategies is going to be to turn these things into exponential equations. If I have just a log on one side, but I don't have a log on the other, that's a problem I would love to turn into an exponential equation. And if you'll recall, I told you a couple of lessons back that I call that flip-flopping. So I'm going to flip-flop this equation. I have a log on one side and no log on the other. Okay. 16 is my base. It stays there. And the other two flip-flop positions, so 16 to the 5 halves equals x. Well, from here, it's calculator work. 16 to the 5 halves. Some of you will probably want parentheses around your 5 halves to make sure you get the right answer. You should end up with x equal to 1,024. If you're not able to get that out of your calculator, just ask me in class. I'll show you how to use your calculator and your exponential buttons to get there. So that's one basic kind of exponent or logarithmic equation. is one that you turn into an exponential to solve. The other kind, and this is the kind that people really like a lot, is when we have a log on both sides of the equation. You'll want to look and make sure they're the same log in both places. Log base 3, log base 3. And don't worry, I don't think they're going to throw anything crazy at you where they're different logs. Unless you get into some higher math classes way beyond what we're doing here. When they're the same log, the logs can just cancel out. Well, now it's an easy enough problem to do. Okay, we'll move the 2x over. This is something we can factor. x minus 5 times x plus 3. We need factors of 15 that subtract to make 2. So we find out that our two values for x are x equals 5 and x equals negative 3. Now there's a rule of logarithms that you can't have a negative value inside the log. If we plug in 5, we get 5 squared is 25 minus 15 is 10. That's okay. 2 times 5 is also 10. That's okay. And it's a good thing those two matched. If we plug in the negative 3, Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 15 is negative 6. Rut row. We have a negative inside our logarithm. That's illegal, so this value is a bad answer. So the only acceptable answer here is x equals 5. Okay. Are you guaranteed to always get one good answer and one bad answer? No. It could be that they're both valid. It could be that they're both invalid. If they're both invalid, then you would say no solution. Just make sure when you do these log problems that you back check them and make sure that your solutions are valid solutions. Okay. The same ideas and the same rules apply when you're dealing with logarithmic inequalities. Okay. We have log of base 5 on both sides. So log base 5 can cancel log base 5. And we get 2x plus 1 is less than x plus 4. Subtract the x over, subtract the 1 over x is less than or equal to 3. 
Now the quicker among you will notice that I also have other boxes on the screen. That's because there's more to think about when it's an inequality. When it's an equation, we're just getting to one number or two numbers, or ever how many we end up with, and we're done. But when it's an inequality, we're getting a set of numbers, a group of numbers, a collection of numbers. We're looking at all the numbers less than 3 or equal to 3. Well, that would include something like negative 10. And if I plug negative 10 into either one of these, I get an invalid number. So I, there, there's got to be some lower range value that stops. You know, that's, There's got to be some value down there that if I go past here, I run into problems. Well, the place to look for those is inside the two logs. We need to figure out where this log is positive, and we also need to figure out where this log is positive. And then we want to pick what's called the least or the most restrictive of the two. Well, let's solve each one. Subtract the 1 over, divide by 2, we get anything greater than negative a half. Over here, if we subtract the 4, we get greater than negative 4. The negative a half leaves out more values than the negative 4. Okay, negative a half, that's the farthest you can go, that leaves out a number like negative 2 that this one would allow. So this is the most restrictive. This is the one we want to use. So our values are between negative one-half, x greater than negative one-half, and x less than or equal to three. Okay. The first part you solve just like you would an equation. And that gets you, in this case, our upper limit. And then we need to look at the interiors of the two logs to get the other limit. And you want to be as restrictive as you can, the most restricted that you can be. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down, bring them in with you, and we will see you in class.